All right, hey everyone, let's keep going ahead with our uh, study of ancient hieroglyphics on doodling with purpose. And we're going to continue, and for the next few weeks, we're going to be going over ideograms, which are kind of the third type on top of single, double, and triple sounds, and then determinatives. So sound glyphs, determinatives, and ideograms. Luckily, a lot of ideograms you already know. So, for example, the ideogram for house estate is per, with the actual uh, drawing of a house. So it can be used as the sound per, like if you were writing the word prune, and uh, you could use the PR, or simply by putting a stroke line under the glyph, it becomes an ideogram or a determinative. Let's look at another one, expedition. All right, so to go on an expedition, you're going to draw a man, the sitting man, and then his hands in the uh, forward position as opposed to pointing to the mouth. And now you're going to decorate the man and make him into a warrior. You're going to give him a shield, a sword, and a feather on his head. So that becomes the ideogram for the word expedition, because you're going to send a, you know, a soldier out on an expedition. All right, this is pronounced misha, misha. The S with the little V over it, remember, is an SH sound, so misha would be expedition. And of course, don't forget, in order to make sure that this is being read as an ideogram, you have to have the stroke line. And of course, the stroke line can be both below or to the right. Well, I guess more to the left if you're reading the other direction. All right, how about the word not? Also one that we recently went over because when we talked about the negative of a tense, so you're going to actually draw that sign. So you start off with a little reverse bird, two lines out, and then you're going to give it the little loops for the hands. What you're drawing, if you recall, when we talked about the negative tense, is this is to <laughs> this is meant to represent somebody shrugging their shoulders. I don't know. It's not me. What do you want to do? So, yeah, you know, <laughs> once you know what you're drawing, it actually becomes pretty simple. And if you look at that, you wouldn't know it was two shoulders being shrugged. But once you're kind of explained that, oh, yeah, I can see it now. And, again, it's pronounced N. Another common ideogram is the word town. So this one's actually also pretty easy to draw. You've got your circle X and then a loaf, T, and put that stroke line. This is also a glyph that has kind of carried forward into modern times. You'll see, uh, you know, a circle with an X on road signs and, uh, you know, X marks the spot usually for a city or a town on a map. That's where it comes from. It comes from Egyptian hieroglyphs. That's why an X is used to mark locations because it was an indicator of a town. And this is pronounced nuit, nuit. All right. Now let's talk about a journey. And, you know, I don't mean don't stop believing. I mean, like, actually going on a journey. So you're going to start with the walking feet, which we've done before. Now we're going to add two Ts, two loafs. So it's nuit, nuit is journey. And again, in order to distinguish that the fact that this is a ideogram and not a, uh, a glyph, you're going to want that stroke line under it. All right, so that's four more ideograms. We're kind of going, we've got quick lessons in the next couple of weeks because most of these ideograms are pretty easy to draw and a lot of them are glyphs that you already know. You're just turning them from a sound into an ideogram with the stroke line. All right, so here are your cards to work on for this week. Make some flashcards for these new ideograms. Practice drawing them, doodling with purpose, and uh, we'll see you next week for more. And uh, oh gosh, we're getting up to... Uh, Episode 200, not too far away. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for being part of the class.